Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best battery powered pressure washer that I've ever used, the new Ego 3200 PSI 1.2 GPM pressure washer. Now, with that said, guys, I'm a little bit confused on where this lands for me. Um, build quality, everything like that, we'll go through all of that, but it is fantastic and the performance is really, really good. Um, but with a price tag of $7.99 for the kit, now don't leave the video yet because we'll talk about some comparables uh, from other brands. That's actually not a bad price, especially for the quality of this thing. But with a price tag like that, I'm trying to figure out exactly who this is for, and I think I figured it out. Now, I've seen a few videos talking about this thing, and it looked really, really good. Um, my purposes of this video, guys, is specifically, I, I waited till it was available, I ordered it, uh, came to $860 with California sales tax for my area. Um, and again, that is the full kit. So you get the pressure washer itself, you get a charger, you get two six amp hour batteries. And that is actually what they recommend on this. There's a little tag that says up to 60 minute runtime with the 60 uh, amp hour batteries, two of them installed. You can still run this with just one battery. You're not gonna be able to use the third power level, the highest power level with only one battery, but you'll still be able to get the, uh, get the job done with just one battery. And like I said, performance is the key component of this video. So I didn't even assemble this thing, right? I didn't put the wand holder in here. I didn't do any of that. I'll put a picture up here for you guys so you can see how that stuff uh, looks really, really good. All right, guys, so I'm actually editing this video right now and I'm at like five minutes. I haven't gotten to the performance metrics yet. So we're gonna stop right here and go straight to the performance and then I'll cover all of the other details of build quality, accessories, all that stuff that it comes with after that. So just stay tuned for that and uh, here are the performance numbers. All right, guys, so this is how I test the unit, right? So what I do is I have a pressure gauge hooked up to the, uh, to the gun. Um, that's gonna read our pressure rating, right? What the actual PSI is. To get my GPM or gallons per minute rating, I just point this thing into a bucket, pull the trigger for a minute, that'll give us our gallons per minute rating. Now over time, those two numbers can increase slightly, right? Once the pumps and everything start to kind of, when, when they're brand new, they have a little more friction than they will down the road once it breaks in. So those numbers can increase slightly. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into the numbers. I did tests uh, with each of the factory nozzles at low speed, medium speed, and then the turbo, the high speed. Now we also did some tests for to check out the runtime, at least on high speed and medium. Um, again, they state 60 minutes on low, um, and I don't doubt that at all. I'm, I'm, I didn't test it because I didn't want to just blast water for 60 minutes, um, but I don't doubt that. So I'm gonna go into my phone, that's where I have my notes on this, and let's go ahead and talk about the low pressure setting. So with our 15 degree nozzle that it comes with, right? The 15 degree nozzle, we were getting 1200 PSI at 0.793 GPM, so under, uh, under one gallon per minute, but again, guys, this is on low speed. This is gonna get you that 60 minute runtime. Uh, 1200 PSI, 0.793. When you go over to the 25 degree nozzle, the, the size of the orifice inside of that nozzle does change. Um, so with that one, we lost some PSI. We are down to 1000 PSI, but now we did increase our GPM and we are at a full gallon per minute. Now, on this 25 degree nozzle, it, did, it registered slightly, slightly above 1000 and slightly under one GPM, like barely. Um, but I just gave it that rating because it, it, I mean, it was right there. Now moving on to the 40 degree nozzle, um, there we got a true 1000 PSI, true one gallon per minute. Now moving on to the medium setting, right? And just so you guys know, when you turn this thing on, it immediately goes to that medium setting. That's like it's, it's standard operating procedure. It just fires on medium. So two bars on the gauge. Uh, with the 15 degree nozzle, I got 2000 PSI at one GPM. 25 degree nozzle, I got 1650 PSI at 1.189 GPM, so just about 1.2 GPM. And then with the 40 degree nozzle, 1500 PSI at 1.321 GPM. So again, uh, each number, when you, when you go up in scale on the power, you're increasing your PSI and your GPM across the board. Now moving into the high setting, guys, this is a very important one because this is where you would be getting that 3,200 PSI that they rate on this thing. That is a very, very lofty number for uh, an electric pressure washer in general. And then to have that out of a battery powered system, I was like, nah, no way. I actually got right when I pulled the trigger, 2,800 PSI. And as I was doing my GPM test, um, this is again, guys, this is with the 15 degree nozzle. As I'm doing my GPM test, I'm watching the gauge. It creeped it, it hit 2,900 PSI. Again, over time, that may increase even more once everything kind of breaks in. Um, are you gonna get 3,200? I don't know, but that's within an error, an error of margin, margin of error, whatever it is. Um, 
it's a small percentage. Like that is a crazy, crazy number for an electric pressure washer in general. And the fact that it's battery powered, it's very, very impressive. So uh, 20, we're gonna call it 2,900 PSI because it did get up there. And at those numbers, we were getting the 1.189 GPM. So just under 1.2. So guys, they're 3,200 PSI, 1.2 GPM rated. It's accurate guys. Like those numbers are so close there. You can't fault them on that. That, that, is, that is very, very good. When we move to the 25 degree nozzle, we were getting 2,300 PSI with a GPM flow of 1.374. And with the 40 degree nozzle, it dropped us down to 1,900 PSI. Uh, and I was getting basically the same GPM. So just slightly above, but so we'll give it 1.4 GPM maybe, but right in that 1.375 to 1.4 GPM. Now that brings us to point number one of who is this pressure washer for? Because yes, you can get the uh, 60 minute runtime on low power setting. Low power setting though, doesn't excite me very much. A thousand PSI at one GPM, it's okay. And, you know, and it's, it's great, I guess, if you're at the lake and you wanna rinse down your boat, all that kind of stuff is great for it. Um, around the house though, it may not make sense at those numbers. You'd wanna go at least medium or high, especially if you're trying to clean up your driveway or clean moss or whatever off, off your walls. Um, you're probably gonna to wanna to operate it at high. So I took it up my property. Um, I live on a property that has, we're on a few acres um, and I have water spigots throughout the property, but I do not have power throughout the property. And that is why this thing is so exciting to me because I don't have to deal with running a crazy long extension cord and dealing with two different things to try and manipulate and get everything going. So I just wheeled this thing up my driveway, hooked it up to one of my local uh, hose spigots and ran it until it was dead on the full high power with uh, the 15 degree nozzle cleaning up my driveway. And with that guys, this thing ran for 16 minutes, just over 16 minutes. Um, which is, I, I gotta say, it seemed like a lot longer to me than that. Just keeping this thing pegged right, pulling that trigger for 16 minutes, working it back and forth, it, it, it goes by slowly. It feels like a long time. It actually got dark on me while I was doing it. So um, 15 minutes, 16 minutes in my head doesn't seem like a long time, but I was able to get a lot of work done with that. So pretty good. So we've covered that, right? Who is this really for? The uh, person that, the, the Power sports person, right? If you're taking your dirt bike out, you wanna be able to rinse it off, this is great. If you want to, uh, if you're at the lake and you wanna rinse your boat off afterwards, this also is fantastic for that. For the home user at the high power, someone unlike me where I don't have power all over the property, but I do have water access, or you, like I said, you could just run this into a bucket as well. Um, it's phenomenal for that as well. Now let's go into the car wash, car detailer side of things, um, because that's my life, right? And I wanted to see what kind of numbers I could get to maximize the performance of this thing for detailing cars. I typically like around 1100, 1200 PSI and it's close to two GPM, two gallons per minute of flow that I can get. So I started off with uh, two nozzles to try on this thing, right? When we increase the size of that orifice of the nozzle, you're gonna decrease your PSI and you're gonna increase your GPM. So with that said, I start off with a 3.0 orifice nozzle. I'll link these down in the description so you guys can find them very easily if you wanted to go that route. With this machine, again, I have the notes on my phone. 3.0 tip. I tested this only in medium and in high. I didn't test it in low because we're not gonna get the numbers that we wanted. With a 3.0 tip on medium, I got that 1100 PSI, which again, that's my preferred PSI range. And I was getting 1.65 GPM. Nothing to complain about there. That will work perfectly well. That's a really, really good number. Um, we could increase that flow a little bit, but um, overall that's fantastic. When you switch that over to high, and it, I'm sorry guys, just so you know, this is all using a 40 degree nozzle, but that doesn't matter. It's just the orifice size that matters. If it was a 15 degree with the same size orifice, we'd be getting, getting these same numbers. But just to be clear, 40 degree nozzle, 3.0. Uh, so 1100 PSI, 1.65 on medium. I bumped it up to high. And again, it increased both the PSI and the GPM. Now I'm operating 1200 PSI, 1.717 GPM. So that's great, right? I actually like that number a little bit better. I'm increasing my PSI a little bit, getting more flow, um, really gonna be great for, for dealing with your cars. However, the problem there is because I'm on high, I'm not gonna get as long of a runtime, right? So I wanna try and find and optimize a spot where I can use it on medium and be good and have all the numbers that I want. So I also tried a 3.5 nozzle, again, 40 degrees. And with that on medium, I got 950 PSI at that 1.717 GPM, so that's a great number. And then I switched it up to high, and I was getting 1,000 PSI at 1.75 GPM. 
Phenomenal numbers, guys. Those, those are fantastic numbers. Crazy, crazy numbers for a battery powered unit. Like very, very surprising. So for my personal opinion, I would probably stick to the 3.0 nozzle um, because ideally I want this to run on medium so I get a longer run time than on high. Uh, again, at, on medium with the 3.0, we're getting 1100 PSI, 1.65 GPM. That seems like the sweet spot for me. Um, again, with the 3.5, you'd be at 950, 1.717. I think the compromise in losing 150 PSI and only gaining you know, 0.6 or whatever, whatever it is uh, in GPM, I think through the 3.0, 1100 PSI, 1.65 is gonna be my preferred method. Now, with that said, I also need to know how long is this actually gonna last me, right? So the other day when I was working on some customers' cars, trying this thing out, just hooked up gravity fed, um, batteries are fully charged, I went and did a job. The two cars are parked next to each other, so I actually did both of them at the same time. I don't know exactly how long I was using it, but I didn't have any issue. I did, however, before testing this thing and actually knowing what the numbers are, I had a ton of range anxiety, as they would say with electric cars, right? I didn't know what I was gonna get through. This is the only pressure washer that I had brought, so I was very, very nervous, but it handled it no problem. Now, with the testing that I'm doing here, I ran it on medium with that 3.0 nozzle and I got just about 30 minutes of runtime. Now, with that said, guys, um, 30 minutes of runtime is great. As a mobile detailer, you're gonna need more than that, so you'd either have to have extra batteries or you know, you'd really have to base it around that. But for the home user, someone like me especially, where I have, I have the, the mobility of this thing is phenomenal, and then the ability to do my car and still get those numbers, it's fantastic. All right guys, so as you can see, phenomenal performance from a battery powered unit. Now let's go ahead and jump into all the accessories, build quality, all the other kind of stuff that you guys may be interested in. Go check it out. Um, but a few things that I did want to note is right on top here, they do have nozzle storage, which is really, really nice. The uh, collapsible handle is fantastic. It feels really good, really fluid. No complaints there at all. It is a really good job. The wheels are, I don't know, they're plastic, but they're almost like a hybrid of a rubber and plastic. They're really hard, but they do the job very, very well. They run smooth. They're nice. As you can see, this thing is dirty. I had this all over my property um, and partially in the dirt. So uh, it handles everything really, really well. So real quick, let's touch on some of the accessories this thing comes with. Um, right off the bat, again, battery charger, two six amp hour batteries. And these things are hefty, hefty, hefty. Is it a big deal? No, because you just pop them in there and then you can wheel it around. But I mean, even like, it's, it's heavy. Let me go ahead and throw one on a scale for you here. All right, so here we go. This thing's all teared out to zero. Plop it on here. Six pounds, 5.4 ounces for this battery. Now moving on to the hose, guys. Uh, I looked online, I couldn't find the exact length of it, so I measured it out from tip to tip. I got 27 feet. Now the hose quality is actually very, very good. Um, some of the best from that I've, that I've seen that come with a pressure washer. Um, it comes with two brass quick connects, which is really cool. Like they take all the guesswork out of it, all the stuff that I would normally recommend you do to increase your uh, pressure washing experience. It comes with it, so that's really, really cool. You can upgrade the hose still. You could go longer if you want to. I st I, my favorite hose is the Uberflex hose. I always use the 50 footer. And this thing, guys, I can't tell if this is an Uberflex or not. It does not say it, it does not have the patent number, but it's a very, it's not. I would say it's not, but it is very, very good. It will roll over on itself, but it does not kink. There's no memory to it. And then one thing to note, I did notice this, this between this and the Uberflex hose, this, uh, joint here is different and then also the connections on the Uberflex are stainless steel on the inside Whereas this one is brass. It's a typical m22 by 14 millimeter uh, connection uh, But it is brass inside. So I don't think that it's an Uberflex hose or even this piece here um, But it is a close second. It's a very good hose if you're okay with the 25 or 27 feet that this is, I would say just keep this. No need to upgrade. If you want the longer hose, then definitely go with the Uberflex. Moving on to the actual extension wand here. Um, really cool. So it actually comes in a couple different components. This piece screws into here. The, the brass extension goes into there. Um, you have your normal quick connects here. And in the back, you can actually uh, loosen this up. And this is where your foam cannon that they include will go. So this is a larger connection, but that's what their foam cannon is set up for. And then you can just use it as a short for that purpose only, only with the um, foam cannon. You can get extensions, so you could modify it if you wanted to, too. 
But I would just replace, if you want a short one, I would just replace the gun. Um, the only thing that I would say is because this thing does have a little battery inside of it, and you can actually control the machine from here. You can change the power uh, level, and it also gives you a battery indicator. That is nice, and it's just, I guess it's Bluetooth, wireless, whatever, it communicates with this. That is cool, but for me, I would still just upgrade the wand, even though this is a great quality wand. So then you just take this piece, you quick connect it in, and I've seen other videos that don't talk about this, so I wanna make this point to you. You just push it in, it snaps into place, right? But then the collar can come back and snap right out again. So what you do is you do that, you take this little collar here, and you tighten this down. There, now there's no spin to it, the collar will not come back, you're locked in place, no worries. The gun also comes with a quick connect as well, so you can connect that to the hose. I'll put a list of all my favorite upgrades for pressure washers down in the description below for you guys so you can check that stuff out. But like I said, this one comes with all, like quick connections on that list, and this one comes with everything set up. The hose is a good hose, yes. If you want longer, upgrade that, but otherwise it's a good hose. Now this thing actually comes with a little foam cannon itself as well. Um, I, first, I, I can't find it right now. Um, Anyways, it's not a full-blown foam cannon. It's not as good as like an aftermarket foam cannon, but for a little foam cannon that, or foam blaster that comes with a unit, it's probably the best that I've seen. It's really, really good. You can actually make adjustments on the top. It's really nice. And finally, they also include a hose where you can actually hook it up to your water, put it in a bucket or into the lake, whatever fresh water source you have. It has an internal pump that'll feed the water through it and blast it out. Now, I used this uh, the other day in my mobile detail setup which is just a gravity fed tank. So I have a big uh, 90 gallon water tank in my truck and then no pump to it, right? It's just, just open up the valve, it runs into the machine and it goes. I didn't have any issue with the pressure or the power of this thing. It performed really, really well. I didn't take actual readings, but I didn't notice any degradation in performance. It was really, really good. Thing I do wanna to touch on the price. Again, $799 for the kit or I've seen 450 to 500 for the tool only if you don't have batteries, or if you do have batteries. Now, that is a big pill to swallow, right? $800 is a good a bit of money, but uh, I do have some notes here, and a long time ago, I reviewed a 1500 PSI battery-powered unit from Ryobi, um, and that thing comes in, the kit was $599. So, this one's $200 more, but that one maxed out at 1500 PSI is what they were listing. This one they're listing at 3200, so double the performance. Also, build quality on this thing is fantastic. Now, I don't know if they still have that one available. They've upgraded to a 2000 PSI unit from Ryobi. Um, Ryobi, Ryobi, I've been getting corrected on that a lot. Uh, I guess it's Ryobi, but I still say Ryobi, so I apologize if it bugs you. Um, anyways, the new 2000 PSI unit, 499 for unit only. Or, uh, and actually I didn't see that they even listed that as a kit. So if you do want a charger and two six amp hour batteries to go along with that one, that was another $450. So you would be in substantially higher price than this one. And still they're listing that at 2000 PSI versus this one's listed at 3200. Um, one thing to note though guys is when, the build quality on this thing is phenomenal. Like even when you put the battery in, it just sits there, you click it in, Really nice, and then there's this little tab right up here. You just pull that, pops up, and you're able to remove it. So really, really nice build quality. Now with that said, this this thing comes with two batteries, one charger, so I tested out, I, I, I drained the battery completely, I plugged in the uh, battery into the charger, again, one at a time, because I have to do it that way, only one charger, and it I, I let it sit for about an hour, I came back at the hour mark, it was flashing on that last thing, it was almost fully charged at an hour, but not quite there, came back, 15 minutes later and it was fully charged. So somewhere between an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, your battery is fully charged. So with all of that said, performance, I'm, I'm happily surprised. It did a phenomenal job. Build quality, this thing looks awesome. Build quality feels fantastic. The wheels are good. The telescoping handles fantastic. The accessories that it comes with are great. Even the foam cannon that, um, again, it's not as good as a full blown aftermarket foam cannon but for one that comes with a unit, it's definitely gonna get the job done. The hose is really, really nice quality, 27 feet. Um, so again, if you want a longer one, upgrade that, but otherwise it's really good. The good thing is it already has the quick connects and they do just back out. So if you do upgrade your hose, just take these ones and swap it over to the new one. You don't have to spend the extra money on, the, on that. One downside that I have of this unit is just, and it's a personal preference, um, is that the water Inlet and outlet are at the same spot. I typically like it where the water inlet is on the back and the outlet is on the front so that it's all in line. Uh, just for keeping everything nice and clean. 
this having both you know, the wa uh, water hose coming in or water hose going out, it gets a little bit tangled up, but not too bad. So guys, my final thoughts on this thing. Yeah, it's expensive, $799. Um, is it worth it for the person that needs this unit? 100%, especially when you compare it to some of the others. Like I said, that 1500 PSI unit from Ryobi um, was cheaper, $200 cheaper, 300, something like that. But the performance out of this one is significant um, compared to that one, like double the performance, right? So uh, actually uh, with that one, I got 1400 PSI tested. This one I'm getting 2900, so more than double. Um, also the water flow on this one is substantially more. Uh, again, the pressure washer wand, fantastic quality. It's plastic, but it's made very, very nice. Um, so overall, um, if you're looking for a unit that can be super mobile for you without having to carry water with you um, or, or carry power, this thing, if you're looking for a battery powered pressure washer so far, guys, this is the one for sure. Um, I will get the, my hands on the Ryobi one, the 2000 PSI one, the newer one that they came out with and test that as well. But the performance numbers don't lie. Uh, the battery runtime was good. Um, again, you have to take that into consideration, 15, 16 minutes um, on high power. So, uh, you know, really kind of calculate that in your head um, and see if that works for you. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope that video helps you. I know there's been uh, a lot of hype around this thing and the hype is real. It's a fantastic, fantastic unit. And I think the build quality and everything, it looks great and it, it, it's a winner. So that's it, guys. I hope that helps you. Please make sure to like the video, make sure you subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and we will see you on the next one.